Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're here for the very first time it's nice to meet you. I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France and every Wednesday we open our home, invite you into the living room for a midweek money chat. And this week is all about how we create a financial buffer. As the cost of living increases, as inflation shows no sign of going away, I don't know about you, but my personal circumstances are that we increasingly have more and more months where the budget is really, really stretched. So what we're gonna talk about today are the big and also all the little ways that we create a little bit of a financial buffer just to give ourselves that little bit more money over the year to make life a little bit more bearable. Because I, I don't know about you, because it, it just feels like sometimes we get up, we pay bills and we go through the day and literally go through the motions of living. And, and life is for living and it's like, how do we get that little bit more money to, to put some enjoyment in our lives? Let's get started by talking about what we do in the good months. So most of our months are okay. If you're here for the very first time and you don't know me, you've never seen our videos before, our income derives from Mike has a pension, I have a pension, and we also make some money from YouTube. When you let the adverts roll on when you watch a YouTube channel, the YouTube creator gets a little bit of money back from that. So that's where our income comes from. So it's not a massive income, but it's not a bad income. Um, our income is just under, if we were in receipt of the pair of us working, each of minimum wage. So it's not a massive amount of money, but it's not a terrible amount of money. But on a good month, we're okay. We are okay. And we have everything set up in place. So we save 10% of our overall money coming in into long-term savings. We have sinking funds set up, and I'll go into a bit more detail about that later, already set up. And we have some money left on the bottom, which we call discretionary spending. Now, some months that might be a bit better than other months, but we only ever take 50 euros each of discretionary spending. So that means if you want to buy a bag of chips, a box of chocolates, a packet of chocolate biscuits or a bottle of wine or a bottle of beer or I want to buy some fabric from the charity shop. That's all we take and it means we've already created that buffer on those good months that that bit, the line in the bottom there that says discretionary spending, that extra little bit there stays in our current account, stays in our checking account, we don't touch that and that's an immediate bit. So on the good months, there's the first thing that we do to create a buffer. share with you what we do in no spend months and no spend weeks. In a no spend month or a no spend week, we pay the bills, got to pay the bills, got to keep the lights on, we buy the food, got to eat, and we put fuel in the car, but we do not buy anything else in those months. And we have three regular months, we have January, July and October, which are no spend months. But we have other months as well, which are incidentally no spend months. February, March and April tend to be no spend months. The weather's really wet here. It can be wet, it can be windy, it can be foggy. It's it's not those months where we want to be, you know, per, there's no things that we want to go to in those months either. It's kind of just naturally, and you might have that too, where you just naturally have months where you think to yourself, well, that's a low spend month or that's a no spend month. And it's quite easy in those months to create a bit of a financial buffer because you're just not going out and spending any money in those times. But we also have within our food budget, for example, we have no spend weeks. So we have tend to have quite a big stock up at the beginning of the month. And we've checked everything out, the sales, all of those things but we have no spend week. So the last week of every single month is a no spend week. And we might have, you know, 37 euros spare, 56 euros spare from our food budget. 
and that in itself, that stays in our current account. That becomes a little bit more of a buffer. So you can see these buffers adding up, can't you? Those good months, we're not spending the discretionary spending. Those months where we've got a bit of money that we keep aside from the food budget because we don't spend in the last week. And you can see here how this pattern is building here, how we are building up those buffers to create that kind of little bit more in the pot as the months go on. Let's talk about the big things and some of these we've done in the past and some of them we do now because we are mortgage free. We're, we're oldies, we've, we've paid off the mortgage over the years, you know, we haven't got one anymore. But in the past when we did have a mortgage and we had two professional salaries and we downsized so we only had a reasonably small mortgage, we made sure we overpaid. Some months we would overpay by only £100, some months we would overpay by a lot more than that and we would just go online and the banking transfer to pay off the capital, some of the capital, some of the lump that we owed. It reduced the term of our mortgage overall. And it, and it created like a buffer in our life, a financial buffer in our life. But there were other things that we did as well. And I know this is a very normal thing for British people to do, and it's a very normal thing to do here in France, is you pay the same amount all year for your gas and electricity bill. I know some of you don't like to do that. You like to get your bill monthly, you pay it monthly. It's the way you do it. But what we always did is we paid the same amount all year. It creates a buffer. So in the, in the winter months, when you're obviously using more gas to heat your house or more electricity in your house to light it, or it might be the other way around. You might be using more electricity in the summer to cool your house. But by paying that over the year, it creates a buffer in the account. Now, what happens here in France is you kind of come to a mutually agreed amount with the electricity company. And ours is EDF, Electricity de France. And we, we pay a certain amount a month and it builds, it builds up an amount. They always like you to be in credit and not debit. They don't like to have to send you a bill because what they do is they just take it from your bank account because you've given them the permission to do that. We don't pay our bills by check, which you can, but we choose not to because we don't like the bill to build up. So what can happen is in May, you find that they don't take the payment in May they don't take the payment in June, they don't pay, take the payment in July. And that creates a buffer. But what we do then is think to ourselves, what are we going to do with that amount? And we were paying 137 a month. And because we built up some credit with them, what we were able to do with that amount of money each month was leave it in our current account and add that to that buffer of money that you just don't know when you're gonna need it, or you might like to use it, because like I said at the beginning, it can feel like we just get up and pay the bills and pay for what we've got to. And what about if you just want a little bit more money to live? Let's talk next about how we build up medium-sized buffers. Now we have uh, sinking funds each month. And we've got those ranging from gifts, Christmas presents, clothing, our dogs, the dog grooming, the vet bills, the car, the car service tires, and all of those. And with all of those, we save for the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario. What if we had a big vet bill? What if we had all four tires on the car go at once? What if all the light bulbs on the car all went at once. So we always think of the worst case scenario and we save as much money as we can into that. Now at the end of the year, mercifully and thankfully, not always th these things go wrong, do they? And that creates a buffer and that can roll over and create a buffer. And we, this is what we choose to do. We tend to roll that money over the next year or sometimes if it's, if it's enough of it, we take a chunk of it and put it into our long-term savings. And it's it's every step of the way creating those buffers. It's, it's never thinking that, oh, I've got this money spare, I can go out and buy new armchairs with it. I'm not, I don't personally choose to spend my money like that. That's that's just that's just personal to me. But it's all the time creating those buffers, just in case, you know, I've taken the dog to the vet, it's got some the, 
animal's got something wrong with its teeth and the vet says, well, that's going to be 350 euros that you're going to have to give me by the time you leave this dentals, this veterinary research clinic today. Is having that buffer there just in case. But here's an example. We've been, we save money every single month to put aside to buy clothes. But this year, we've not bought any clothes. So by the end of the year, we've worked out, you know, there's going to be 300 euros spare that we saved that we haven't spent. And it's it's having that buffer there that we can we can roll over, we can put it aside next year. So next year, I don't know, if I wanted to buy some garden furniture, you know, in spite of the fact that, you know, everything is so tight, that every penny is spoken for, that every penny has got a job to do. It's just having that, that buffer put aside. You might want to put that buffer aside. You might want to treat grandchildren. You might want to help out a friend. You might, might want to make a charitable donation. However you want to use that money in a way that is personal to you, but having that little bit of money that you put aside and go, well, I, did, I saved it, but I didn't need it. I can roll it over to next year and buy myself something fancy. I don't know, super pair of leather boots. Who? It's your decision, but it's having that buffer created purposefully, and that is the purpose of frugality, isn't it? To purposely think about what we're going to do with our money. Having that put aside means it's every single bit of the way, every single bit of saving, every single bit of spending, it's all about for us, because it's the way we are, of creating buffers. One of our biggest bills, just because that's the cost of living these days and the fact that we live in France and that food is expensive here. It's much, much more expensive here than in the UK. It's about twice the price. So we have a big chunk of our money goes to the supermarket. That's all our food, all our drink, all our toiletries, our cleaning products, our laundry products, loo rolls, all of that. We have a set budget for that of 400 a month. And we need to create buffers in that so for example, these are many things that I've shared with you before. We make sure that we always do a stock check. And when I'm doing that stock check and I'm looking in my freezer, looking in my fridge, looking in my pantry, I'm always thinking about stretching that food as far as it can possibly go. And by doing that, I can shave a little bit more off my budget each month. I could bring my budget down to 300, but I'm always trying to keep a bit back. Like I always said with the previous thing, I'm always thinking of the worst case scenario. What if there's no sales? What if there's absolutely no sales that month? We all know there's no sales in November and December. Never, never any food sales in that time. Really difficult. So that's a big thing that I'm doing. I'm batch cooking. So I don't use so much electricity when I'm cooking or in the winter, I don't use so much wood when I'm cooking. I'm regularly buying 10% of my budget into long-term food savings. Not just food savings, but anything that I would buy from the supermarket. So I really, really scrutinize my apps and those online sales because I don't get flyers. We don't get paper through our door here. We're always trying to reduce that and lots of supermarkets have stopped that now. But I am genuinely looking for the real, real offers so I went there one month, hand wash and shower gel was half price. I bought hand wash and shower gel for the rest of the year. I went one month and things like mayonnaise and uh, tomato ketchup and salad dressings, they were on offer at 33% off. So I bought enough to see me through right till the rest of the year. And that's what I do with my 10%, which is 40 euros a month. If I go and I can get a really good deal on toilet rolls one month, or it could be laundry liquid, then I get 40 euros worth of it. And that'll pretty much see me through the rest of the year. And that in itself creates a buffer zone because I've got some spare each month. Um, I'm gonna be doing a whole video on its own about creating a buffer for Christmas. Don't miss that this Friday, it is coming up. Because like I said, you do not see those offers in November and December.
Now let's talk about how we shop and when we shop and how that creates buffers. Just about everything in my house from everything you can see around me. I've bought in charity shops and I, I first of all like to support the charities and secondly I don't like to see things go to waste and I like to get those good quality things second hand. But they're not cheap anymore, I'm sure you'll agree with me. Leave a comment below if you agree with me that charity shops are not cheap anymore. So we are careful about when we go and we keep an eye out. So we follow the charities that we follow, like Amayus, uh, Chiffonniers de Joie, the local Les Puces, for example. We follow their Facebook groups and we look out for when they have their 50% off. If I want to buy some cutlery, some plates, some kitchen items, some, a frying pan, um, t-shirts or anything like that, I'm looking out for their sales and I go when it's 50% off. It's exactly the same way if I'm going to buy anything that I might wear or I might need from the supermarket or clothing item from a store like Decathlon here in France. I'm looking out for that. So it's not just I'm budgeting for it and I'm keeping money aside for that, but I'm very careful about when I go. Because like I said, those charity shops, they're not cheap anymore. Let's talk children and creating some kind of buffer for all those things that children are going to need because they are going to need them. You may be very organised with your finances, you might have set up sinking funds for maybe all the children that might have gone into one fund. You might have set up a sinking fund for each of the children. The older children cost more per year than, more per year than the younger children do. The younger children really don't care or don't mind if every single thing that they wear is a hand-me-down or every single thing they play with or read or wear comes from a charity shop. They might be a bit bossier when they get older or they just might be too big or they wear things through things really, really quickly. So how can you do that? Like I said, you can create sinking funds or a saving pot for each of them. But there are other ways of creating financial buffers for your children. Here's an example, they are going to tear through stationery at school. So buying a little bit each month and keeping it tucked away, out of sight and out of mind so that they are not dipping into it. You're the mum, you're the dad, you're in charge. You give it to them when you deem that they need it, not when they just want it. It's exactly the same with clothes. When you see the next size up of underwear or t-shirts or sportswear or school uniform on offer, that is the time to buy it and put it away. Having those little Christmas presents that you build up, whether you put that in a Christmas stocking or you put that in a little Christmas box, those little gifts that get wrapped up, those are the bits and pieces that you can buy throughout the year. The same with their birthday. You might use a cash envelope system. You do have to be quite disciplined to do that because you only have to have something that comes up that you hadn't planned for or you hadn't prepared for and that cash can literally make your hands itch, can't it? But find a way that works for you to create that financial buffer. Personally, as a parent, I can remember that if I saw underwear on offer or I would think to myself that, you know, those socks are getting a bit worn and I would buy them throughout the year. And it's like keeping, I'm going to sort of show you that sort of big plastic box with a lid, those big storage boxes, and keeping the neck size up. Keeping your eyes open when you're in the charity shop. Those books, you think, well, they're eight years old and the books that they're going to be reading when they're 10 or 11 and keeping those. But also keeping in mind not to do too much into the future because they can have a complete growing spurt. They can go from size six clothing to size 10 clothing and all the clothing that you've bought in between might not fit them. And it's exactly the same as shoes, isn't it? It's a... Uh, it sometimes it's need to have a bit of cash put away or a bit in the sinking fund put away to create that buffer or the actual physical clothes, the actual physical books, the actual physical stationery, the actual physical toys, for example. But creating those buffers for your children. It's August, the children are going to school, back to school for the autumn term. At any moment here in Europe, in the UK and here in Europe, they're going back the first week in September. Do not forget in your relief that they're going to be back at school to get the school calendar. The school will have the whole calendar, and I'm speaking here from personal experience, 
the school will have their whole school calendar put in place at the end of the summer term and completely finalised and tightened down by the first week. So everything will be in there. The Christmas fair, the fundraising, children in need, comic relief, book day, poetry day, book week. The dates will be out of activities week, of sports day, of the residential camps. All of those will be there. Make sure you are the parent who gets them from the school as soon as you can. Email into inquiries, email into the school secretary. They don't have a school secretary, they have a full administrative team within a school, especially secondary schools, and ask, can I have all the preliminary dates that you have in place? So you can be prepared and think to yourself, well, every children in need day costs me a fiver. Every uh, Christmas jumper day costs me a fiver. And you can be prepared and have that buffer in place so there's no surprises. So there never is. There's never any unexpected, there's unplanned. You can be ready for it. And especially with that school clothing and the children's clothing, it's having it put away for each month when you can afford it, put it away. It's another way of creating a buffer. I'm going to finish off today with being reflective because you know I'm like that, aren't you? And I'm going to put it out there and I'm absolutely aware of the fact that if you are living in poverty and that you do not have enough money just to, just to make ends meet, that you know what I've said to you today about frugality isn't isn't going to help you a great deal the only way to get yourselves out of poverty is to increase your income we also completely accept and understand that you might be too disabled too sick or too elderly or too unwell to do that and we absolutely accept that at the moment there are people out there between a very rocky rock and a very hard hard place we don't have the answers for everybody but for those of us who've got just enough just enough, like, like Mike and I, living just below minimum wage here in France, just enough. It means that by being mindful about our spending, and that's what frugality is, mindful about every single bit and having that plan in place for every single bit, means that we can just keep a bit back, that we can create those little financial buffers along the way to have a little bit of money spare that you can say to your friends once in a while, let's meet up for a coffee, or, or just have something in your life, a day out, just those things that make life so worth living and so enjoyable. Thank you, everyone who's watched the video today. We really want you to contribute today. We love all your comments, we read everyone, and we know that you read the comments too. You respond to each other in the comments. It's like you're having a chat sometimes. It's great. What do you do to shave that little bit off here, there and everywhere to create those financial buffers? Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.